Very recently, the UK released the Artificial Intelligence Playbook for the UK government, and it's actually quite useful. Inside there, you'll find 10 principles that every company needs to know about. And I think it's really interesting to reflect on these 10 different principles because they align with what I believe too. What they don't have within them is educational pedagogy and links to education, but hopefully that's where I can fill in the gaps within this video to talk about what those 10 principles are, along with how educators can align with them, because it's something that I agree with. For context, I create lots of different AI videos on my Instagram, TikTok, and of course here on YouTube. I'm going to be creating all sorts of different trainings on my website, teachtraveltriumph.com, so make sure you keep an eye out on there for upcoming training. Principle number one is understanding AI and its limitations. So with this, I often start a lot of my CPDs with a quote from Dumbledore that I'll put on the screen here. The thing about this quote is that AI is the words that come out. They can be something that fixes, but also potentially damages. And the thing about this, especially it being a quote from someone fictional, is that AI is not magic. It's something that was created by humans for humans. AI can help with all sorts of different things from lesson planning to generating ideas to helping with simple things like emails, but it doesn't replace the emotional intelligence that teachers have. And using it for topical things like behavior management and ideas for that can create some problems. It definitely doesn't uh, replicate emotional intelligence and your teacher judgment. So while it can do lots, it certainly doesn't replace you as the teacher. So understanding that is important. Principle number two is AI ethical use. When you're using AI, it's really important that this is number two to ensure that you're not encroaching on data protection, especially in the UK with GDPR rules. You need to make sure that you're thinking about what you put into the AI because AI information typically can get stored, especially with free models and used for a later date for further training. So if you're using AI models, making sure that you're not putting sensitive information of yourself, but of course the children that you teach too. Principle number three is using AI safely. Alongside the ethical side of things, making sure you're not putting data protection in, this refers to things that we would typically explain to children within Internet Safety Week. AI is going to be incredible for all sorts of phishing and cyber attacks in the future where AI can very quickly replicate human voice and it will be hard to distinguish whether you're talking to a human chatbot or an AI chatbot. So having an awareness of the tools that you're using and making sure that you're not inputting private data if you're talking to something like a chatbot is also going to be really important and something that's going to become a little bit harder to, to, to distinguish in the future but it is something that will be crucial. Principle number four is having human control at the right stages. It's important to note that AI is artificial intelligence, but you are the human. You are the pilot, not the co-pilot, and it's about making the AI work for you. At the end of the day, once you create a prompt and the input is put in, the output that comes out is up to you as a human to re review. I believe that AI is great for creating 80% of what you need to do, but that 20% should come from you as an individual to be able to tailor, tweak, and put the output out there in your own tone of voice, but also making sure that you believe everything that's being put out there too. Principle number five is about managing the full AI life cycle. And what this means is understanding how AI comes into play, reviewing that at its face at multiple different points with teachers, with leaders with governors within the school and of course having some sort of pupil feedback if it's a pupil-led tool uh, making sure that that is part of the narrative because there are going to be limitations on different tools that come in but making sure that it is a whole school process and not just one person leading the charge is really key for making sure that the whole school has an input in what's being put out there to the teachers and potentially the students too principle six you use the right tools for the job. This sounds like common sense, but this is one of the big ones that I believe in the most from this document. At the moment, there is an AI drive, and if we can use the words AI in marketing, we find that traffic increases. However, in the world of education, there are times, as I've mentioned before, that the human teacher side comes first. Sometimes when you're teaching maths, there are elements that AI struggle with. But there's also elements where actually having that human nature touch is super crucial. So if I'm having a debate, I'm not just going to look 
to AI for those debate points, potentially, because it might not generate things that I agree with and it might not be the best human approach to the lesson, especially with children. So not only thinking about the ways in which AI can lend to support with lessons, but also thinking in the ways that it doesn't just have to be an AI tool. If we're teaching a maths lesson, going back to that maths point, sometimes, you know, maths AI isn't able to generate correct answers, but there are going to be tools that aren't necessarily AI online. For example, a tool like MyViewboard or Mathagon, Polypad that's going to be able to help you with a range of different resources that can support you succinctly with the lesson. It doesn't have to be an AI chatbot and things like that for every single lesson. Principle number seven is being open and collaborative. I believe this aligns a lot with number five about reviewing the life cycle of different products. I like to think that I know lots and lots about AI, but I don't know everything about AI. And I certainly don't know everything about the different AI tools that come out there. So it's important for educators to make sure they're up to date. I run a Facebook group called AI for Teachers, and I've been able to learn all sorts of different things about different tools that are going to be coming into the forefront. Sometimes tools come in and very quickly, we're able to collaborate, discuss how those tools potentially might not be safe for teachers and potentially children to use too. So also, while you might have an idea of how something can be used, being open to other ideas of the ways that it could be used, also the ways that it might be potentially dangerous, is really, really important at the moment because AI can feel like sometimes a bit of a wild, wild west, and I definitely don't know everything. So that collaboration is key. If you feel like you wanna add in some different ideas of how you align with these principles and perhaps things that I haven't put in within this video, make sure you use the comment box to add your comments too because it adds to that collaborative element too. Principle number eight is about working with commercial partners from the start. This is more for leaders inside schools. At the moment, it's very quick to get sucked into the world of AI and feel like tools could be useful for lots of different things. It can be easy to sell tools to teachers and leaders in the format of this will save time. It's even better when a tool comes across and it's this will save time and it's, it's free. However, Understanding that not every tool is going to be fit for the right purpose is going to be appreciated by teachers too, because otherwise they're going to get overwhelmed. At the end of the day, it's not just thinking about whether a tool is free, it's about thinking about the time burden that comes from the staff learning that tool too. So while you might want to invest in different tools that are tried and tested by other schools, do also think about the human resource side of things too, about the amount of time it might take a teacher to learn yet another tool as well, especially in the world of education where teachers don't always feel like they've got a lot of time. Principle number nine is about having the skills and expertise to implement AI solutions effectively. This is where I come in with videos like this to hopefully provide a little bit of CPD to make sure that ch children, children and teachers, teachers probably most importantly, as they're going to be delivering the skills, have the right skill set to be able to utilize the AI tools. So if we're thinking about using things like ChatGPT, how teachers can utilize those using things like prompt engineering and not just using a wrapper where they press a button and it does it for them, making sure that they're able to use those tools because those will be skills for the future rather than just something that does it for you now. I will be creating all sorts of different CPD and more future free videos on YouTube to support teachers with this and so make sure you do keep your eyes peeled. Number 10 is about alignment, making sure that you're using the principles aligned with policies to make sure it's right for you and your school. If you don't have a policy in place yet for AI in education, do not worry, but it is worth having the conversation now. Your AI edu in education policy doesn't have to be perfect on the first attempt. It can simply be a draft and as and when teachers are using these AI tools, having that as part of the conversation that you have in these staff meetings where AI literacy is being developed, what works, what doesn't work, and how we can think about things that are going to be important in terms of education. So for example, how teachers will use AI tools, some of the things that we've spoken about before about data impl implications, if you're inputting the wrong data, such as student data, making sure that things like that are aligned. Um, but these are all sorts of things that there's plenty of information online and this is something that I'm hoping to build up in the future too, to help schools with understanding the different things that they are going to need to focus on, especially in the world of AI policy. So there we go, that is the UK government's AI playbook. The 10 principles that they have shared that the government should be going along with and hopefully I've been able to give you a bit of a flavour as to how that applies to the world of teaching. Do you agree with the principles in the first place? If you do, Leave a comment. If you don't, also leave a comment, explain why. Perhaps there's other principles that you might have thought of that you feel that perhaps should have been implicated. Um, maybe there should have been 12 principles. Who knows? 
I personally feel like they've done a good job and it's more of a thinking point, more of a talking point than anything else that has certainly got me thinking about the way that I use AI and some of the way that I might train schools in the future. If you're interested in things like training, make sure you go onto my website, teachtraveltriumph.com. At least sign up to my mailing list where I'm going to be sharing all sorts of free different tools. I've created freebies in the past that I like to share regularly. So you can go out to the website, check those out. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that too. And hopefully you'll be able to see future CPD that comes out. I really appreciate your time and watching this video all the way through. Thank you very much. I hope to see you in the next one. Till then, I'm out. Bye.